Somebody that even has the most, even the, the least bit of interest in knives, to come through this show, just if for nothing else, just to go around and look at the displays around the outside. It's, uh, the displays here are, are unmatched any place in the United States in any of the shows. South Sea Islands makers, uh, uh, the old uh, native swords and parisas and things like that, are, are displays of scout knives, Remington knives. Everybody tends to try and get a, um, a niche that they want like to collect. And my personal one are the quill knives. I, I collect the old uh, English quill knives. This is a very rare one. These are, this is called a quadrangular knife. And it has blades opening on all four sides of the knife. In this particular case, there were 16 blades. I've been coming here to the show for, uh, oh, since the mid 80s. Mm -hmm. In the last two years, I've been fortunate enough to get a table to uh, be a vendor at. My main collection is kind of goes toward um, stag-handled hunters, but uh, you come by a table and there's knives that jump up at you and you just can't leave alone. There's stuff here that even your staunchest knife collectors would are amazed at when they see they see something here like, wow, I've never seen that before, and they talk about it to their friends. So even your best collectors are amazed by some of the stuff they see here. I collect for handles. Uh, I like pretty handles. So celluloid pocket knives to me are really fantastic. You know, it never fails to, and they're less expensive than bone or stag. But you got to collect everything because sure enough, somebody that has something you want wants to trade you. So you better look for a little of everything. You know, that's kind of the fun part of it. Princey has been coming with me to the show. He's an old Pomeranian, aren't you? Yes. And a spoiled boy. He has been to every show with me. So he is, uh, yeah, he's about 11 or 12 years old now. I watch people here. Oftentimes they're new, new visitors. They've never been to a knife show before. And they're just amazed at the range of things that there are, there's to look at here, the range of knives that exist, and, and um, get a chance to meet knife makers, get a chance to meet the president of the knife company, maybe the knife that they carry. The Oregon Collector Club, is uh, they do a fabulous job putting this show together, um, and I, um, I, I had my head soft to them because uh, uh, it's been very well attended. And I notice people are doing a lot of trading, a lot of buying. We sell a few of our factory stuff just to uh, pay for our trip and everything, but uh, it's um, uh, I'm, I like it enough and I want to come back, so we're, we're going to expand a little bit next year. My grandfather started Buck Knives uh, in uh, 1902. He made the first Buck Knife in Leavenworth, Kansas. He was 13 years old. And uh, he uh, just wanted to make a knife that would hold an edge a little better. He felt like he could do it. so. Uh, he uh, he started making a few knives out of files, using uh, plastic for handles and things, and gave them to his friends. Their friends started, uh, they liked them, so their friends wanted them. They held an edge good, and uh, so he started selling them. And so we're taking the liberty of saying, okay, we started in 1902. Uh, since then, uh, uh, he made them in, uh, throughout his life, not heavily, until he came to San Diego. 1945, and uh, he uh, ta taught my father in the making. My father was his oldest son. He taught him how to make make the knives, and uh, they made about five knives a day. And they're charging. They were charging five dollars a piece. Ran a little uh, three quarter inch high column wide ad in outdoor live field and stream, and uh, they would sell about five a day. And that's how that's how it went. And when my grand grandfather passed away in 1949, my dad kept it growing through the 50s, and then in 1961 we incorporated the business. And then it really took off. You're the third generation. I'm third generation. I, I'm now the chairman of the board. My son is the president, uh, CEO. So he has to stay there and run the business, and I get to travel around like this. <laughs> I've been coming to this show since I was uh, a little a little kid, probably about uh, eight years old. So it's uh, been about 20 years now, 
And uh, it's a good show for knowledge. There's, uh, there's great stuff here, a lot of knowledge in this room, a lot of great knife makers. And uh, I've met a lot of great people coming here. And, and most of the great people I've met, I'm just walking the aisle and, and boom, I bump into a great person like, uh, like Al Mar that's no longer here or, or uh, some of the great knife makers that have been here in the past. So uh, it's, a, it's a good show to be at. There's something here for everybody. You have the, uh, the old timers knives and the new age knives and, and the, the fixed blade knives and the steel junkie knives and the production company knives and, and you have just about all the varieties here. You know, for the different markets. There's like culinary knives and... Oh, it, it ranges from, from a $2 knife to a multi-thousand dollar knife. From, from a, a low material to a great material. You know, it's uh, tight tolerances and lower tolerances. So uh, it, it's a wide variety here. 34 years ago, Wayne Goddard and myself got together uh, to see if a show would work. And what we did is we... Um, invested our own monies into it to see and uh, I capped out all my credit cards and um, it was successful so therefore we turned it into a non-profit organization at that time. And I think that was 1976 is when we did that and uh, we've been doing it ever since. Our motivations in the beginning have uh, not changed or very in the least uh, and that is to provide a fun environment for family, friends, and people that enjoy anything that goes cut, no matter what its variation is. We are not a commercial show. <clears throat> we are a nonprofit organization show, and uh, part of that means that we invest into lower table rates, and uh, memberships are low, and uh, we continue to do that. We have raffles and uh, fun things like that. People donate freely to that end. More importantly, what we recognized was something you and I had talked about a little bit as far as people coming into the show. Uh, if you go through our show, you'll notice that there's probably just as good a variation of uh, percentage of uh, women and children as there are men, who is typically men are into guns and knives and whatnot. <clears throat> so what we wanted to do was to offer uh, museum quality displays around the outside. So if a person had a table, then we give them a free table for a display. So there's 24 displays around the room, and all of these are educational displays. Uh, we put them to task because we offer some awful good prizes and custom-made knives that uh, we give to them, give a dozen of them away each year, and people just buy for that. So the education level of the displays is exceptional. There's no other show that I know of in the world that has as many nice museum-quality displays as we do. And we're pretty proud of the fact that we can uh, offer an environment where people come and really, really enjoy themselves. Um, we get so many thank yous and we get people that leave with a big smile on their face and, you know, vow and swear to come back every year. And that pleases us. We, we've accomplished something. Um, it doesn't come easily. There's a lot of work that goes into the show. Uh, we're planning already for next year's show and uh, even thinking about two years in advance of what we want to do and what we want to accomplish. Um, for us to see happy faces, see people at their best, enjoy, we work to that end and uh, put a lot of effort to that end and you know it works.